Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'll be doing an unboxing of Great Battles of Julius Caesar Deluxe Edition from GMT Games, designed by Mark Herman and the late Richard Berg. Uh, this was developed by Alan Ray. It's a reprint of a couple of uh, previous Julius Caesar games that have been obviously out of print for a while uh, in the Great Battles of History series, and this one comes to you in a deluxe combined edition. Uh, nice big box. Um, it is listed as uh, one to four players. Solitaire suitability is high at a seven. There's not really a lot of hidden information. Complexity is only a six. Um, and this includes 20 battles from two other, the original two titles were Caesar, the Civil Wars from 1994 and Caesar, Conquest of Gaul, published in 1996, which was uh, reprinted in 2006 and includes additional eight battles published in supporting modules. So uh, let's crack this open and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so we got a nice picture of Julius Caesar right here. He posed for this. All right, so we'll start start out with counters on the top. Bit of a diversion from GMT's usual practice of rule books on top. And we see a long way down here. Let's go. Oop. Got a half sheet of counters. So there's eight sheets of counters. Six to seven and a half, right? So let's take a look at them first. So here they are. They are half inch counters. They're the kind you're going to have to cut out from the sprue. Probably uh, one around them with an Oregon Laminations Deluxe 2 0.0 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter uh, corner rounder, if you like that. And various units here, uh, generals. There's J. Caesar right here. J. Caesar, M. Antony, General Domitius, P. Sula. Got two Julius Caesars here. One of Gaul and one of CW. So he was a country western star. And then one of Georgievina. All right. So then we've also got our uh, not only other counters here, and it tells you this is the 36th Legion counters. This is the Pontus Legion. This is the Delatara so you can say if you want, you know, if you just want to play a single battle, you can you know, just punch out the counters that you need. We also have some ships here, some uh, biremes and triremes, I assume, will come, be coming later. Um, small boats, some routed markers. GMT does a really good job, for the most part, of printing their counters well centered, especially with the half inch counters. It's not a lot of margin of error, and, and they get most of their information where it needs to be. So it's counter sheet two, counter sheet three, four, I feel like I'm doing Sesame Street. We're just counting in order here. Now the Simbri, they got a lot of counters, as did this one here. This is the uh, Numidians, Moors, and the Gatulians. And over here we've got the Pontines. So not to be confused with the pontoons, which are another kind of boat. And hey, we've got the Germans. And for once the Germans aren't in the uh, you know, black or gray. So that's good. Sheet number six. Now we got some markers. Probably some strength points here. Uh, a few more parse, parsey units. Then we got missile low, root march, reaction fire, screen, missile low, missile low, routed, so on and so forth markers. Some other markers moved, pursuit finished, wounded, game turn, engaged, 
the D markers grappled. Assume those are for the boats. You wouldn't want to throw those at uh, at the units. Walls down, impetuosity, ferocity. Those little half sheet counters. Counter sheet number eight. All right. Here we go. We have our Great Battles of Julius Caesar scenario book. And this is fortunately just the scenario book because it's very, very thick. 80 pages. 80 pages. So this covers all the scenarios that you're going to play. Nice. GMT matte finish that they are known for. And we've got, so again, this is the scenario, it's not the rule book. So, explains the counters, competitive play, rules on initial deployments, counter abbreviations, uh, rise of the Roman, Roman warlords, and then straight into scenarios. The Battle of Serta, Numidia 106 BCE, or just BC as is the norm. So it doesn't give a list of the scenarios, but it's pretty much going through the end here, the different scenarios, so. All right, so you get that. Now we got the rule book. And the rule book comes in at a very light 48 pages. It does have an index, which is always helpful to find the rules you're looking for. And it looks like it's all rules. No basic rules versus advanced rules for this. This is all the rules. So uh, a little dense, a lot of a lot of text here. Start out with a you know uh, glossary terms. And then uh, leaders and commanders, sequence of play. Very, 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 very text heavy here. So at least in the early stages of looking at the rules. Lots and lots of, lots of rules. It did say the complexity was um, uh, a six, as I do recall, and solitaire suitability is a seven out of nine. Hey! The Trump option. I didn't think we were being political here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's a game mechanic intended to simulate the effect of superiority in the area of command, as such is likely to be used almost exclusively by the player. With probably better leaders such as Caesar, the inferior player will often find that for him, its best application is when it backfires on a supposedly better opponent. To that extent, players should be aware that simply because this option is available doesn't mean that it should be used indiscriminately. So. Combat, missile fire. Just get your facing. Now we're starting to get into a little more graphic examples of play. Harassment and dispersal. It's an HR game. If you harass people, you get dispersed. So again, there's some reading here. There's definitely going to be some reading in here. Uh, I'm not sure if they have, it didn't look like it, they had training scenarios or anything like that. Now they do have some optional rules uh, and they're smattered in like 10.5 is engaged as an optional rule and I think I just saw another one here somewhere. I was flipping through them. Uh, maybe not. So we get the one optional rule. Yep, and then fortifications, army withdrawal, and victory. Then we have our credits, then we have stacking charts, and the index. But wait, there's more. While these are the rule books, here are the, here's the naval rule book. And this is only 12 pages that covers the naval rules. Naval rules use a shortened version of the rules for war galley which was a previous expansion, I believe, to recreate sea battle with Veneti. Many of the rules in War Galley are not included herein, such as ramming, raking, etc., simply because those tactics were, tactics were not possible in this unusual battle, the only such battle pitting oars against sail. So those little ships we saw were the Veneti sail ships going against the galleys. So here's the, the naval rules. You got about 12 pages. 
a lot of examples. All right, now we get to the maps. For each battle, I would presume. Let's clear any cards, let's put the maps out. We're not going to open these completely, because in some cases, like this one here for Serta, the Bay of Biscay, this may be a naval map, is basically one large uh, grid map. So, so not much to not much to see terrain-wise or anything like that. And being a bay, it's probably this is all water, water hexes. Uh, the maps are very thick. They're not they're not um, and finished or anything like that, but they are very a very thick paper, like not quite cardstock. They're still flexible, but they uh, they seem like they'll be more durable than standard paper maps. And then on the reverse side of this one, we have no. Well, in this case, it's a half map. See the white side there, so you can just actually play this one as a half sheet map. So that's pretty cool. Right. So, in this case, uh, Nicopolis, 48 BC. Uh, basically, just have a river and some berms of something built up. Uh, trenches, excuse me, those are trenches. And then otherwise, it's just empty hexes. like uh, the old maps from the gas stations in the 70s. So we got a smaller, smaller map here. Yep. So in this case, this is a small map sheet. There's four panels. And the Munda this is the south map, so there'll be a north map that you put together. But then if you want to play the, well, same thing here, the Pharsalus. Thessaly 48 BC south map. So you're going to piece these together. So instead of being a big map, it's two smaller maps that you piece together, which might be nice because it might be that you only have to play on the south map. And you don't have to set up a whole big map on the table. That would be really, really good. So then we jump to try to find that other map. If we can here. Yeah, here's the north map. In the kind of order here. Yeah, here's the Munda, Spain. Although this is a pretty big map. So actually, it looks like you get a map and a half. Yeah, this is a full size map. This is the north map for Munda. And really, you've got, you've got terrain, heights. Uh, yeah, they're, you can tell from the here it's got uh, levels the different terrain levels level one got towers gates roads all the way up to level 10 so you've got height and then you got the road coming through it again they're all still pretty thick quality they seem they seem consistent they're just various sizes and shapes so you have to find them so here's Thapsis, got a big water area, and marshes, and again, let's see what this map key is here, level one, level two. It seems they're consistent with the uh, level coloring. No, no, you're going to have to look at the key for each map. So for example, I guess it's all relative. On this map, level one is green, and then it gets to a, to a slightly lighter green to level two. Whereas here, level one is you know, almost, almost ivory colored, and level two is the green. So you'll have to look at each map when you're playing the battle. And this one is like almost totally green. So, you know. And this is uh, Gorgovia. Gorgovia, Gaul, 52 BC. Got a fortified city in here. Walled city. Some towers, so on and so forth. And again, each one has a key on it, which is nice. And the Rhine. Caesar versus Aravistus. We've got 
fortifications, towers, rivers, and then finally, Bibracht, Gaul 58 BC. A lot of game in this. 20, 20, 20 scenarios. So a lot of game. It lets you look at the maps yourself. You just know they're there. They're good quality. That's what I'm here to report. All right. So then we got a player aid card. Get two of these. These are double width. Player aid card one. And the normal good GMT coded card stock. And. Clash your swords chart, shock superiority chart, shock combat results chart, missile range and results chart, fortification effects chart, movement cost chart. So each player gets one of those, and then player card two is here as well. Get two of those, also double width. Command summaries, summary of orders and legion line commands, line legion command eligibility chart, stacking charts, route, voluntary and route movement. Those. And there's more. Oh, in fact, there's player aid card three. These are single width, double sided, of course. This gives you your leadership check, leadership check chart, leader casualty table, rally table, the die roll of doom, dun, 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 the elephant rampage table, and a sequence of play. Do this. Then we have the Route point tracking card. As you track your game turns, route points for the Caesarians, Romans versus the Senatorials and non Romans. And the Gregovia Simple Great Battles of History Terrain Effects chart, which is not helpful if you're tracking on this. You cannot flip this over, so it would be nice to have this as its own sheet. And then finally, the Great Battles of Julius Caesar Naval Charts and Tables card, which gives you all that information that you need. Wind, fatigue, command transfer, squadrons, disengage, more beautiful artwork, the boarding table, missile fire table, firefight table. Bag of bags to store your all your counters once you punch them and round them. Or you use GMT trays, take the insert out, stack them in there. And then we have our dice. We have all red. We have two six-sided, nice large six-sided dice with rounded, rounded corners, rounded edges. Those are nice. And then one ten-sided die. All right. So we got seven versus six. So the six-sided die beat the ten-sided die in that round. Ooh. And then the six-sided came back and slaughtered them twelve to five. So anyway, if you pick up a copy of the deluxe edition of Great Battles of Julius Caesar just released from GMT Games. You're going to get those dice, the bag of bags, the naval charts and tables, the route point tracking card, player three sets of player aid cards, two sets of three player aid cards, player aid card three, player aid card two, player aid card one. You're going to get a bunch of maps bunch of maps. You're going to get one, two, three. And this one even has, sorry, just notice this, this one even has smaller hexes. Just slightly smaller. If you can see that or not, they're just, yeah, just, just slightly smaller. Like a, a lighter color here. See that? Sorry, so we lost count. So you get one map, two maps, three maps, four maps, Five maps, six maps, seven maps. You're gonna get the naval rule book. You're gonna get the Great Battles of Julius Caesar rule book, the massive tome of the Great Battles of Julius Caesar scenario book. Eight sheets of counters, seven and a half sheets of counters. And a nice big beautiful box in this well, well made package. And that is everything in Great Battles of Julius Caesar Deluxe Edition, designed by Mark Herman and Richard Berg from GNT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.